getting ready for another visit hopefully in just a couple weeks from my um, awesome mother-in-law our kiddos we got some birthdays coming up Titus and Maddie both in the next two weeks um, and also got uh, Titus's gotcha day um, not the day that we adopted him but the day that we actually picked him up from the hospital and he came to live with us uh, forever nine days old was just absolutely awesome um, to see him come home to watch Lynn the night it was the night of Maddie's birthday party actually Lynn had to take off leave the birthday party head to the hospital go and pick him up just unbelievable well definitely Susan be praying for Anna Elena so good to hear uh, that you're having a much better day yesterday got an opportunity to pray um, with just one of our attendees it's just been struggling with uh, post-concussion syndromes and a little bit of PTSD just so many people with so many different things going on and so just encourage you that it is uh, not only uh, I guess a a call or an act of obedience for us to pray but we're invited to pray and it's an honor to pray uh, for one another we're going to be talking just in a couple weeks about one of our uh, just creeds one of our core values being that we are saturated in prayer what does that actually mean and I don't know about your experience but mine is this actually in a lot of ways has been the first time that I've actually made the consistent time um, to pray and pray with focus and not just pray over my meal or pray because something real quickly came up or to tell somebody hey I'll be praying for you but to actually do it and then with that also today is October 1st and so hopefully you saw yesterday posted on various Facebook pages that we are beginning to just walk through the Gospels the next two months and so we're gonna be in Mark and John this month and um, in that you got to pay attention to the schedule because it's it's chunks of Scripture rather than just chapter after chapter after chapter. I like to keep it kind of easy a lot of times, but just sometimes you gotta break it down a little bit more simply. And so this morning we opened up in John 1 and in Mark 1, reading about roughly half of those two chapters. And so invite friends to join, just an awesome opportunity for us to actually hear and meditate, to reflect on the words, the life, um, just the impact that Jesus had in the gospel and then ultimately at the end of the month to be reading the story of the resurrection together because it turns out that's not just for Easter um, but that that is as true today as it was the day that Jesus ro rose from the grave and that the tomb um, was empty that the stone rolled away that he is alive and active today and so I just want to encourage you in that way that the reason why we can pray is that we know and believe that we have access to God because Jesus granted that access the reason why we can rest secure today is because we know that our anchor Jesus holds behind the veil the reason why we know that we are fully known and fully forgiven is that Jesus advocates on our behalf and so with that we have the Holy Spirit that he has sent to live inside us that just guides us and directs us in a way that we can live and honor and follow Jesus and so with that it just actually turns out that the life really is all about Jesus and that sounds almost in some ways too simplistic and in that I wonder if that's an act of blasphemy honestly that to follow Jesus we say is too simplistic maybe we just don't understand what it means to follow Jesus to be an apprentice to sit under his guidance and tutelage to be what Paul would say conformed to the image of Christ and so I've been thinking a lot about that I'm super excited about this weekend coming up as we talk about what it means to be faithful in our communication and application of gospel truth and so maybe for you just a little prep work for your heart that you can be thinking about is what is truth like what does that mean gospel truth how can we be faithful in our communication of it and faithful in applying it these are just the questions that I'm wrestling with Amber oh man I just mentioned it's so good to see you glad you could jump on this morning but I think about it from this standpoint of this morning I'm reading and reflecting on John 1 when it says that that the Word of God became flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth John 1 14 through 16 and as I look at Jesus Jesus seems to be the definition of truth right and so what does that look like what does it look like to follow Jesus and maybe truth isn't this arbitrary thing out here but it's actually embodied in the God of the universe and so as I think about that today I want to maybe see Jesus in a new way not just as my guide or instructor but as my actual just embodiment of truth of what humanity is supposed to be what it was supposed to look like and in that what it one day what we one day will look like as we're fully redeemed through the gospel of Jesus. 
So I want to be praying for that. I want to be praying for so many of us that are maybe anxious at this time, maybe struggling, maybe some of us that have a fun weekend ahead, that got some good big plans, um, because life isn't all conundrums and complexities, though life is super complex. But even that leads us to gratitude and thankfulness of knowing that in the midst of our complexity, that we have a God that has made it life simple. Love God, love people. That's made himself known. That the light has stepped into the darkness and the darkness will not overcome it. And so as we jokingly put some things out, I love what Sarah just said, that it's Thankful Thursday. That we would reorient our mind to even see our suffering, even see our circumstances as an opportunity for gratitude, for thankfulness, that it says this in Colossians 3, 16, that we would let the word of God dwell in us richly, but that ultimately we would end up, because of that, being thankful. So God, we do, we thank you so much for today. We thank you for October. We thank you for pumpkins, and we thank you for changing fall colors. We thank, thank you for rustling of leaves. We thank you for hot steaming coffee. We thank you for chili and cinnamon rolls. We thank you for family and community we thank you for our church god i want to pray for our staff for our elders god i want to pray for those that are hurting medically those that are struggling mentally those that are um worried financially those that are um maybe in the midst of things i want to pray for those that maybe just feel overlooked and unseen father maybe those that feel hopeless and like you haven't heard their prayer god we want to continually cry out to you not just to heal our land, meaning make us more comfortable, but heal our land of sin. Heal our land of idolatry. Heal our land of division and fracture, frac fragments. And God, unify us as a church under just the heading of grace and love and truth, that those things are not exclusive, that those things don't even go hand in hand, that in you, God, they overlap, that you are grace, you are love, you are truth. So God, I rest assured today, no matter what I have to wear, no matter who's in office, no matter what goes on around me, that you sit on the throne. God, I pledge, pledge my allegiance to you and to you alone. God, I don't take it lightly, and God, I pray forgiveness for when I have taken lightly the title Christian. God, help me have your mind. God, as I read about John, who says in Mark 1 that He's not worthy to wear the sandals that strap onto your feet. God, I know that I'm unworthy to be in your presence and yet you've made me worthy and that you've invited me and created me and chosen me and called me by name. And so God, I pray for Anna who's missed so much school. I thank you for Elena and just helping her with her panic attack. I thank you for good positive meetings yesterday. I also pray for those that are maybe frustrated and struggling as teachers, as custodians, as administrators, as bus drivers. God, I want to pray for those of us that are trying to figure out whether or not we're going to keep our job or keep our home or is the farm going to produce enough crop this year, God? There's just so many different things, God, but yet each of them, I pray that we would run to you and I'm thankful that we can. And so God, we begin reading these gospels of Mark and John. And God, we ask you to anoint your word, that you would implant it in our heart, that you would renew our minds. Father, that you wouldn't just alter our behavior, but you would continue to just grow us into who you want us to be from the inside out. God, we trust you for the process. We surrender our way for yours. It's in your son's name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Praying for you guys. Pray for me.